All right, guys, let's look at the last of the conics we're going to cover, which is the hyperbola. So the standard form of a hyperbola it looks very, very, very similar to the standard form of an ellipse, but the big difference is we have a minus sign between the two terms. So we had x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equal to 1, but now we have minus. So if it was a plus, that would be an ellipse, but now it's a minus, so the... Um, the equation is going to result in a hyperbola. Okay, the center of a hyperbola is hk, like the shift that we see here. But just like with the ellipse, the, the center is not a point plotted on. It's not like the vertex on the parabola from the last section, which was a point on the graph. This is not a point. This is a center where we, we start the process of graphing it. But it actually is not a point on the graph. All right, and then um, if we look here, x squared is the positive term, y squared is the negative term. So when that happens, then our, our foci are uh, lined horizontally, okay, and the graph is going to open up left and right. So we're going to have, for this one, we would have a hyperbola that would open up this way. All right, and like this okay and our foci are actually going to be beyond these points that are on here okay and then that hk is again like we said it's just like the foci here it's not on the graph it would be the point in the middle where these things uh, bend away from each other all right, and then the, um, the when we have y squared term is the positive one and x is negative, then the these guys will open up and down. So one will open up, one will open down, and again now the the foci are aligned vertically, and they are going to be. Uh, above and below these lowest and highest points on the graphs of these hyperbola, right? And then that HK would be right in the middle there. So very, again, the graphically it looks very similar to the, um, the, the ellipse other than the pluses. We have the, the, the same thing. It's just, we have minuses here. A squared is, A is what we consider to be the denominator. Uh, of the positive variable. So if x is positive, a squared is, is what's underneath x. If y is positive, a squared is what's underneath y. Below, if you re or with an ellipse, if you recall, a squared was the bigger of the two. So like, let's say this is 16 squared, and or which was eight, 4 squared, 16, and this is 9. All right, 16 was bigger, so it was positive. But now, if this was 9, and this was 16, or, or just for different numbers, 4 and 25, this is still the, um, the denominator that's positive is A, no matter if it's bigger than, than B or not. Okay, so we go by who's positive, who's going to be A, and who's going to be B. All right, this time when we're calculating the foci, we need C units away from the center, all right? And uh, this time, instead of A squared minus B squared, it's A squared plus B squared for a hyperbola. So hyperbolas have asymptotes, and the way that we graph those um, asymptotes are we, we find our center, so in the middle there would be the, the H and K, All right, and then we determine the values of A and B. So this one, X is positive. So we would go to the right and left A units from the center because, again, A is the positive one. So this is H plus A, K plus A, K. This over here would be H minus A. Oops, comma, K. 
And um, then from there, we go up and down whatever y's are, b units. So we would go up b, we would go down b. So these values are So right there, right there, right there, right there. We are adding B and subtracting B from K. So this is H minus A K. This is H minus A K plus B. H minus A K minus B. K plus B, K minus B. And then the asymptotes are if we connect diagonally, through these points and then ultimately what's going to happen when we graph this is we're going to start off from the the vertices here and here and we're going to go towards the asymptotes we don't touch the asymptotes we just move towards those asymptotes and that's how we will um, graph these things. So the asymptotes are going to be extremely important for these. All right, if we have y leading off, notice the subtle difference between um, the, the way that we write this. So when uh, x is positive, we have b over a. All right, that's the, the uh, negative, the y, the y squared is negative. That's the negative term on top of the positive term, b over a. Okay, when x leads off, we have that as the equation of our line. When y is positive, notice we switch that, and now it's a or b. It's, it's the fact that y, you know, the change, the slope of a line is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going up by whatever this is. So here y this is associated with y, so this is the change in y, change in x, change in y, change in x. So it's it's flipping over, but it's it's not any different. Um, it's just who we're giving the denominator to. It's because we always call the positive denominator a is the reason why we're seeing that that subtle difference. Okay, let's do one just to make sure we understand how to do this. So. Um, our center is going to be 2, 1, all right, and then from that center, we are going to um, move away from the center, or, or make our asymptotes from the 2, 1. We're going to go left and right, because this is under X. We're going to go left and right 5. We're going to go up and down 2, the square roots of these numbers, and that's going to be our the little box that we make for our um, our asymptotes. Okay, so we're moving to the left five. That's our ver our vertex. We're moving to the right five. That's our other vertex for these um, hyperbola. All right, there's our, our focus um, on the left and right side is going to be the square root 29 away from the center, not from, from our vertices, but from the center. So instead of adding and subtracting 5, we are going to add and subtract the square root of 29. The square root of 29 is bigger than 5. All right? The square root of 25 is 5. This is a bigger number, so this is bigger than 5. That means we're going to be a little bit beyond the vertices, which we should be. Okay, We're out a little bit further than that. All right, Where are these equations coming from? It's y minus the y-coordinate of the center, x minus the x-coordinate of the center, and then 2 and the 5, that's the denominator of, of the um, y divided by the denominator of x. All right, square root, so I should say square root of the denominator. So the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 25 is 5, and so that is 2 fifths. That's why we're seeing that. Change in y over the change in x. 2 square root of 4 over 5, the square root of 25. And then we could plot all that in there and we get our our what what this thing will look like we just to this this time it's not like we need they're not parabola so we don't need three points to graph them we need the vertices and then we 
we know that they're going to move towards the foci, and the foci are out beyond these. And then we know that they're going to move towards the asymptotes. Okay, so this is, I like this picture that they have here from our textbook. The, where the two asymptotes cross is the center. So they're showing that. And then they're just making a box. How do I get that box? I go left and right, A. I go up and down, B. So left, A, up, B. Left, A, down, B. Right, A, up, B. Right, A, down, B. Those are the corners of the box. Go from upper left corner to lower right corner, lower left corner to upper right corner, connecting those. That'll make your asymptotes. And then we move away from the vertices towards the asymptotes in both directions. And there's your hyperbola. All right, as we see in every section, we have them in non-standard form. When they're non-standard form, your uh, x and y squareds are going to have opposite signs. That's the telltale indicator that you have a hyperbola and not an ellipse. If it was, again, if it was a parabola, one would be squared and one would not be squared. So this is a hyperbola because I see squared uh, x's and y's, and only one of them has uh, a positive sign. The other is negative. Okay, when I group them together on one side. Okay, I'm going to uh, group them together with uh, the 9y squared and the 18y together, the minus 16x and the 96x together, and then complete the square, just like we've seen in the past. All right, pull out the negative 16, and I'm again, I'm, I'm grouping this with this. I'm pulling out the negative 16, so that's negative 16 divided by negative 16 would be 1x squared. Positive 96 divided by negative 16 would be negative 6x. All right, pulling out the 9 that's in front of the y, I get 9. Y squared, divide this by 9, I get 2y. Now I'm going to complete the squares on both of these, but just like with the ellipse example, when we take half of this and get a negative 3 and add a 9, I'm actually going to add to the, to the other side negative 16 times the 9. Half of this is 1. Um, 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1 in the parentheses, but to the right side I'm going to add 9 times 1. All right, I'm going to do negative 16 times positive 3, or sorry, positive 9 on the other side. So negative 144 plus 9. So negative 16 times positive 9 is negative 144. That's ultimately what I'm doing to the left side because of the negative 16 times 9 here. So I do it to the right as well. 9 times positive 1 is 9. So I added 9 over here. I add 9 over here. I subtracted 16 times 9 on the left, so I have to do that to the right. Don't forget to multiply these. We're not just adding 10 to both sides here. We're adding 16 times 9, or subtracting 16 times 9, and adding 9 times 1. All right, and then um, what did I square to get 9? I squared negative 3, so that's a minus 3. What did I square to get 1? I squared 1, half of that 2, so that becomes y plus 1 squared. Combine all this together, you get at 144. And now, the last thing, we're going to divide both sides by 144. Negative 16 divided by 144 is 9, negative 9. All right, so we see the sign change there. Uh, 149 divided by 144 will reduce down to 1 over 16. And that's what we're seeing there. So, again, this is negative 16 over 144 reduces to 1 9th. 9 over 144 reduces to 1 16th. And there's our standard form of our um, hyperbola. All right, change in y is 4. Change in x is 3. So when we do our uh, asymptotes, we're going to have the plus and minus 4 over 3 when we do those. Okay, so there's our center, positive 3, negative 1. All right. And then our uh, foci, if we square, or if we add these two, we get 25. So that's c squared, so that means that c is going to be 5. Okay, so we will, um, again, because this is uh, opening up and down now, we will be adding and subtracting these numbers to the y coordinates. So subtracting and adding 5 from our center gives us these two points for our foci.
these two points for our vertices because again a positive number was under uh, the y coordinate so we're moving up and down four all right and then there's our slope for our asymptotes so there is our equation our center is three negative one so we got y plus one equals plus and minus oops plus and minus uh, the square root of 16, the square root of 9, x minus 3. So there's our, our hyperbola. All right, and then the last example, what if they give me the slopes of the asymptotes and then the vertices uh, of the hyperbola? Can we come up with its standard form? Sure, we can. So a couple things to note here. Number one, our vertices are lined up left to right. Notice to get to one vertex, negative 1, 0 to the other one, we move to the right, 8 units. So we're moving left to right between vertices. That suggests that our parabola has x, x squared, as the positive term. So because of that, I know that this thing's going to look like this. x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared. All right, I also know the ratio of a to b, not, th not their squares, but a to b is... Um, this is changing y over changing x. So this is, a is going to be double what b is. Okay, so a is going to be double what b is. So again, we have to be, we have to be aware that it's not, it's not that this is 1 and this is 1 squared and this is 2 squared. All right, it's, this is, this is the reduced form. You know, when we have a fractional slope, like if you were in a, and pre-calculus, and your slope was 4 eighths, you wouldn't write it as y equals 4 eighths x plus b. You would write it as 1 half. So um, this is the reduced form of the slopes. So we're not, you know, we're, we're not yet being given what a and b are, or we would, you know, we'd be done here. We have to understand that we are, um, we have this ratio of a to b, or sorry, in this case, b to a, but we, uh, we, we don't have enough information yet to know which one they are. We do have enough information to find H and K, though. Um, the center is halfway between the vertices. So if I add 7 and negative 1 together, I get 6. All right? and, then if I, and then if I divide that by 2, I get 3. So the center of this thing is going to be at 3, 0. I do know that part, at least. So that means that H is 3. And y is going to be 0. So y minus 0 is just going to be y squared. So our numerator for the y part is going to be just y squared over whatever b is. Also here I know these are 8 units apart. Oops. These are our vertices are 8 units apart. So that means that um, a our, our biggest number, our, our positive number I should say is half of that since they are eight units apart. Remember we have to go to the right and to the left from the center to hit the vertices. So that means a is going to be four. So since a is four, now I do have everything I need to do this. I can say x minus h, which is three. And I know that the denominator is four squared, which is going to be 16. And then minus, we said that that k is going to be 0, so this is going to be y squared. All right, and then what did we just say about a and b? The slopes of these things are, are um, b to a. b over a is equal to, that's a 4 to a half, right? So what fraction, what number do I need to put up here for it to reduce to a half? Well, I need a 2. Right, so b is equal to a a equals four, and this is b squared, so that's going to be a four. So we're going to have a, a sixteen on the bottom of the x minus three, and a four on the bottom of y minus zero. And again, it's equal to one, so equals one. And there is our equation. All right, so that is how we can work backwards through this. We just have to know how. The, the plots are made, and if we know how the plots are made from the, the equation, 
then we could take, you know, we could work work that backwards. It's just like with any any of these formulas in, in math. If you really understand them, you can work through them forwards or backwards.